Cars have come a long way since the original horseless carriages we saw centuries ago. There are countless exciting and new features introduced every year, from the first heated seats in Cadillac's 1966 Fleetwood to the recent Tesla emissions testing mode in 2018. But not all of these inventions have been as successful. In fact, many were horrendous failures or even outlawed as dangerous. Today, we're going to be taking a look at some of the biggest flops to ever hit the automotive world. If you've ever sat in rush hour traffic before, you've probably wished for a feature like this. The Hum Rider was built by A2ZFX. It looks like an ordinary Jeep Grand Cherokee at first, but with the flip of a switch, it can use a series of carefully constructed hydraulics to rise above the road. What? At 9 feet of elevation, the Hum Rider can roll right over most commuter cars, skipping the line to get to the front of the light. But sadly, this technology isn't exactly practical for most trips. After all, if everyone had one, well, it would quickly become a contest to see whose could go the highest. The only thing people hate more than traffic is parallel parking. This next invention might just help with that the Lydiard Omnidirectional Wheel. Not only can these bad boys roll forward and backwards, they can also rotate the tire around the wheel itself using a series of motorized rollers. This is a massive advantage for maneuverability, and we've already seen similar technology used in construction equipment. But there is some concern about high-speed stability, and of course the higher cost when compared to conventional tires. But with a little refining, this could actually be the greatest invention since, well, the wheel. And speaking of tires, why fill them with air at all? Well, a lot of companies have tried to make the first commercially viable airless tire, but there are quite a few speed bumps in the way, from durability to safety. Apparently, these things tend to deform under the immense heat and pressure of high-speed travel. Let's step into the interior for this one. Back in 1992, Mazda introduced their fifth generation 626 sedan, and it came with a special swing button on the dashboard. When pressed, this feature automatically rotates the air vents back and forth, just like an oscillating fan. While it sounds cool in theory, the tech really didn't catch on. The little motors that ran it broke easily, and drivers usually just point the fan at themselves. But sadly, little rotating fans aren't the only failure Mazda has had. And oh boy, does this one hurt to include. The Wankel Rotary Engine is a unique motor design that forgoes the traditional piston layout to use a spinning triangle instead. Mazda used this engine in a few cars throughout the years. It's supposed to be more compact, have smoother power delivery, and maybe reduce vibrations as well. But sadly, the rotary also has poor fuel efficiency and a tendency to break down when the apex seals wear out. Truly unfortunate, since this is also one of the best sounding engines ever made. Forget best sounding, Fiat debuted the best tasting car feature in the Fiat 500L. This Italian ride was offered with an optional espresso maker that could clip into the center console and brew you a fresh cup during your morning commute. It was said to be the first production car in the world to include a coffee maker, and also the last. Turns out boiling water in your armrest caused concerns about distracted driving and risk of burns. Who would have guessed? Talk about annoying. For some reason, Chrysler thought it was a fun idea to add an electronic voice alert system to 24 different models between 1983 and 1988. A door is ajar. This innovative computer system would recite audible system warnings and reminders to its occupants. Some owners found this annoying, so they removed the fuse for that feature and disabled half their gauge cluster in the process. Please fasten your seatbelt. Chrysler, alongside the other few brands that were dumb enough to try this, quickly realized that people did not like it. So they added an off switch for later models and ultimately ditched the entire thing. Thank you. We've already looked at one parallel parking feature, but this is a problem drivers have faced since at least the 1930s. Back then, a man named Brooks Walker tried to solve parking headaches by using the spare tire to swing the back half of your car around, something that could really help in a packed lot. Sadly, this was a pretty expensive design and it took up almost all of the trunk space. So the concept died with Walker in the 70s. 
Motorcycles are a lot of fun. I've owned several of them and there's just nothing quite like the feeling of leaning into an apex. But what if that sensation could be introduced to the car world? Plenty of manufacturers have tried to develop tilting cars, like this Nissan Land Glider. They feature closed cockpits, safety features, and usually three or four wheels, but can still lean into corners like a bike. None of the attempts have really taken off. Maybe it's because they're too small for the modern SUV driver, too ugly for people's tastes, or just too plain weird. Although to be fair, nothing can compare in weirdness to the Saab 9000 Prometheus. This car was different in a lot of ways. It had a V4 motor, adaptive cruise control, and also this big red button. But most surprising of all, it had no steering wheel. Saab gave it a joystick control in the hopes that this could be safer and more fun than a traditional wheel. Well, they were dead wrong. The joystick was reportedly difficult to use and tiring as well. Plus, as someone who's left-handed, I gotta wonder whether lefties would be forced to drive with their non-dominant hand, or if like sports equipment, it would come in opposite layouts. Which then creates a whole world of issues that a significant portion of the population couldn't borrow each other's rides. But I guess it doesn't matter anyway, since joystick controls were not a big hit. Automatic seatbelts didn't fare much better. For a few years in the 1990s, brands like Honda and Ford tried to force their drivers to wear safety restraints with a sliding track and motor that ran whenever the door was opened. But the silly part is you still had to manually click in the lap belt since using just the cross chest belt alone is considered dangerous. This made the entire device completely pointless, not to mention it broke a lot and well, was really annoying. The last feature failure is also probably the most famous. Pop-up headlights exploded in popularity during the 70s and 80s and were included on everything from the Lamborghini Countach to the Ford Probe. Sadly, the lovable and cute pop-ups were banned, not due to impracticality or annoyance, but because they posed a risk to pedestrian safety and had poor aerodynamics. They're technically still allowed these days, but the legal hurdles that brands would have to jump through in order to get one registered for the road is just way too much trouble than it's worth. Electrical failures were also common, which in some cars could make the headlights completely unusable. In my old Porsche, I remember having to manually crank them up or down anytime I drove at night. Not particularly fun. It's a sad demise for one of the most beloved design elements of all time. I think if I invented a new car feature, it'd probably be like an automatic drink dispenser. So you know how like hikers and motorcyclists have these water pouches in their backpack and like a straw coming over their shoulder? I'd want something like that, but with the pack like built into your headrest. That definitely wouldn't leak down the back of your neck, I, I promise. 